First, a little housekeeping. If you use Firefox, we want to set up a preference to make sure these instructions match what you see when you download your LFS files. To set the preference, open Firefox, then click on the orange Firefox button, then click on Options. In the Options window, click the Applications icon, type PDF in the search box. On the Portable Document Format PDF line, change the action to be Use Adobe Acrobat in Firefox and click OK. This will make Firefox use Adobe Reader to show PDF files which may look slightly different than what you had previously. We're going to take a look at the new T drive which is where you will save your LFS units. If you click the Start button, then click Computer, you should have an LFS Toolbox T drive listed. If you don't have the LFS Toolbox drive, please contact the Technology Department. The folders in this drive have been created so all teachers and admins can read the contents. However, not everyone can edit all the contents. Teachers can only change subject areas they teach. For example, the first grade teachers can only change content in the first grade folder, and a high school math teacher can only change content in the high school's math folder. If you double click to open the T drive, you will see folders for each school. When you open your school's folder, you will see pre-created folders for various grades and subjects. For the grade level teachers, you'll need to open your grades folder to see the pre-created subject area folders. Inside each pre-created subject folder, you can create your own subfolders by course or unit. You should have a grade level or department discussion on how your team plans to organize your subfolders. Once your team has planned out your course folder structure, we recommend you pre-create the necessary subfolders. Later, you will create individual unit folders in each of these course subfolders. For example, inside the high school science folder, we've created a college prep physics folder and have the units in subfolders. Inside the unit folders, we can see the unit lesson plans and related attachments. If you need help with the folder structure, please contact Mr. Hewitt at extension 1013 or by email. Here are the steps you need to go through to print your LFS lessons to a PDF format and then save them to the T drive. To make things a little easier, we recommend you download a unit and all of its attachments before downloading the next unit. First, sign into the toolbox, then click the blue Manage My Documents tab. If you use the white Manage My Documents tab, you will get a message about the toolbox being shut down. If you get that message, simply close the Toolbox Sunset tab. Under Manage My Documents, click the All Shared Documents link to expand it, then go to where your files are located. I'm going to use a high school physics course for an example. You may have to go under Chris Morrill or wherever your team stored the files. You have to expand your file tree far enough to expose the units. We can print units, but not folders. Click on a unit to highlight it. Then in the Documents Tools box on the left side of your screen, click Print. Under Print, click All. In the Message box, uncheck the Exclude Empty Decisions box, then click the Print button. When the unit loads, move your mouse to the lower portion of your screen and a toolbar will appear. Click the disk icon to bring up the Save As dialog box. If the Save As box doesn't default to your Downloads folder, you'll need to get there by finding the Downloads link on the left side of the window, it will be near the top of the list, and click it. Click on the file name and type a name for your unit consistent with the way your team has discussed. Press Enter or click the Save button. You can now close the Units tab on the top of the screen, but do not close out of your web browser. Click Return to get back to the list of units. To save your attachments from the unit, expand the unit tree by clicking on the plus sign or double-clicking on the unit name. Items with a plus sign have attachments. These may be your acquisition lessons, launch activities, or student assessments. In order to see the attachments, either double-click on the item or click on the plus sign. 
Click on the attachment to highlight it, then in the Document Tools box on the left side of the screen, click Open. If you're using Firefox as your browser, click the Save File option in the message box, then OK. If you're using Internet Explorer, click Save in the message box. Either way, this saves the files to your Downloads folder. If the attachment is a PDF, it will open and you need to save it the same way you did your unit. To do that, click on the disk icon, then in the Save As box, make sure you're in your Downloads folder, rename the file if you want, and click Save. Repeat this process for each attachment within the unit. Now that we have at least one unit and the associated attachments downloaded, we can copy the files to the T drive. To go to the Downloads folder, click Start, then click your name in the upper right column. In the window that opens, double-click the Downloads icon. To make sure each unit and its attachments are listed together, click the Date Modified header near the top of the window. This will arrange the files in the order they were downloaded as compared to the default, which is by name. For example, we downloaded two units and their attachments and sorting them by date has grouped them together. This is why we recommended you download the unit and all its attachments at the same time. To open the T drive, click Start, then Computer. In the new window, double-click the T drive. Navigate to your school, subject or grade, and course folder. If you haven't created a course folder yet, Create it now by clicking on the New Folder button at the top of the box. Open the course folder by double-clicking on it. Inside the course folder, create a unit folder by clicking on the New Folder button at the top. Type the unit name and press Enter. If you have multiple units downloaded, you can create a unit folder for each unit. Back in the Downloads window, highlight one unit and its attachments by clicking and dragging the mouse across the files. To copy the files to the T drive, left click on one of the highlighted files, drag it over to the correct unit folder in the T drive, and drop them by releasing the button. Repeat this for each unit you've downloaded. When all your unit files and attachments are transferred to the T drive, the process is complete. If you make changes to your files in the LFS Toolbox site after this, you will have to copy the files to the T drive again. Remember the Toolbox site will not be accessible after July 31st, so you must download all your content before then. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has helped you understand the process of saving your LFS documents from the toolbox.